Hello fellow ears, and welcome back to Weekday Wind Down with the Word, where we are reading through the book of Leviticus, and today we will be reading the 16th chapter of Leviticus in the NLT version. So without further ado, let's start reading. This chapter is about the Day of Atonement. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. The Lord said to Moses, Warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the placement of atonement is there, and I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put his linen tunic and the linen undergarment worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and put the linen turban on his head. These are sacred garments, so he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family making them right with the Lord. Then he must take two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people to the wilderness of Azazel. Aaron will then present a a sin offering, the goat chosen by Lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat chosen by Lot to be sent away, will be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it is sent away to Azazel in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. Aaron would present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull as a sin offering, he will fill an incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powder incense and will carry the burner and the incense behind the inner curtain. There in the Lord's presence, he will put the incense on the burning coals so that a cloud incense will rise over the ark's cover, the place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. If he follow these instructions, he will not die. Then he must take some of the blood of the bull, dip his finger in it, and sprinkle it on the east side of the atonement cover. He must sprinkle blood seven times with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people and carry its blood behind the inner curtain. There he will sprinkle the goat's blood over the atonement cover and in front of it, just as he did with the bull's blood. Through this process, he will purify the most holy place, and he will do the same for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and the rebellion of the Israelites. No one else is allowed inside the temple when Aaron enters it for the purification ceremony in the most holy place. No one may enter until he comes out again. After purifying himself, his family, and all the congregation of Israel, making them right with the Lord. Then Aaron will come out to purify the altar that stands before the Lord. He will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat and putting it on each of the horns of the altar. Then he must sprinkle the blood with his finger 
seven times over the altar. In this way, he will cleanse it from Israel defilement and make it holy. When Aaron has finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. He will lay both his hands on the goat's head and confess over it at the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sin to the head of the goat. Then a man specially chosen for the test will drive the goat into the wilderness. As this goat goes into the wilderness, it will carry all the people's sins upon itself into the desolate land. When Aaron goes back into the tabernacle, he must take off the linen garments he was wearing when he entered the most holy place, and he must leave the garments there. Then he must bathe himself with water in a sacred place, put on his regular garments, and go out to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself and a burnt offering for the people. Through this process, he would purify himself and the people, making them right with the Lord. He must then burn all the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The man chosen to drive the scapegoat into the wilderness of Azazel must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as sin offerings whose blood Aaron takes into the most holy place for the purification ceremony will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hide, internal organs, and dung are to be burned. The man who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. On the tenth day of the appointed month in early autumn, you must deny yourself. Neither native-born Israelite nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you, and you will be purified in the Lord's presence for all your sin. It will be a Sabbath day of a complete rest for you, and you must deny yourself. This is a permanent law for you. In future generations, the purification ceremony will be performed by the priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in place of his ancestor Aaron. He will put on the holy linen garments and purify the most holy place, the tabernacle, the altar, the priest, and the entire congregation. This is a permanent law for you to purify the people of Israel from their sins, making them right with the Lord once each year. Moses followed all these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded him. And that concludes the reading of Leviticus 16 in the NLT version. So once again, um, I don't know about you guys, but now this chapter just made me think of, um, you know, that it's kind of, it seems like it's on a loop. But I know each and every one of these uh, chapters in Leviticus are different. And you have to pay real close attention so that you're not getting it mixed up with the chapters that we read a few chapters ago because they're very similar. But uh, again, I am so grateful for Jesus Christ and his atoning blood that we don't have to go through through all of these laws and everything. And my time is almost up. Uh, I do thank you for listening to Weekday Wind Down with the word and excuse my voice. I'm tired and it's a little bit crackly. So thank you for staying with me.